Today we are going over methods of heat transfer. So there's five different types of methods of heat transfer that the board likes to go over and likes to cover. Um, they are just different ways that heat can be transferred from one source to another. And it's usually the colder source is absorbing heat from the warmer source or heat is being created through some sort of method. So we're gonna go over the five different types. These are the most common. These are the only ones that show up in the book and the most common that are gonna show up on the boards. So what we have, the five different types are conduction, we have convection, we have conversion, we have evaporation and we have radiation. So those are the five types and I'm going to go over each of them. So conduction, this is the first type of heat transfer. This is when heat is transferred through direct contact between two different materials or substances or surfaces, something that are different temperatures. So as I said before, this is where the warmer temperature kind of the heat is absorbed into the cooler one. So let's say it's you have a hot pack and you're placing it on somebody's wrist. The hot pack is going to transfer energy as warmth into your skin, which is colder than the hot pack. So the skin is absorbing the heat from the hot pack. The opposite is true when it comes to a um, cold pack. So the cold pack, if you're placing a cold pack on someone's knee, the cold pack is actually absorbing heat from the knee. So essentially the cold pack is getting warmer and then subsequently the tissues in your knee are getting colder because heat is being absorbed by the colder object, which is the cold pack. So that's kind of how conduction works. So I think conduction as in direct contact. So I know there's like a bunch of, all these, a lot of these are similar. There's three C's when it comes to um, heat transfers. So, but I look at the D in conduction, I think direct contact. That's how I remembered it. And so examples of this would be a moist hot pack, moist heat, any sort of thing like that. Cold packs, so that's what CP stands for. And then any sort of ice massage, the cold, cold ice bit is absorbing heat from the skin. That is how that works. So it's not the cold is going into the skin. The heat is coming out of the skin when it comes to cold packs and ice massage. Cryo cuff slash game ready. That's this one down in the corner here. Um, it's like kind of, they can put, this is like a little like knee or like leg cuff that they have here. You could even use that for an arm, depending on how big this size is. You would just put that on the body part. They have a lot for the shoulder. So what it does is it circles like cold, um, water and like icy water through the like little cuff and then it makes it cold and then another example would be paraffin so these are all like think they're in direct contact with the body part so heat is going from the warm object into the cold object depending on if it's hot or cold packs kind of thing and then I want to note because this is important when it comes to um, any sort of ice baths or something like that water transfers heat faster due to all the physics of water. So um, you're gonna lose heat faster when you're in the water. So convection is um, used with fluidotherapy. So convection is essentially that the heat transfer is moving over a body part and it's circulating and circulating and circulating. And that is how the heat transfer ends up happening. Same kind of thing if it's hot, then the colder body part is absorbing it. If it's cold, then the heat is being absorbed into the water kind of thing. So this is capable of transferring large, large, large amounts of heat because every time it's moving over the surface, it's pulling more out, pulling more out. Kind of how when you're outside and you're already kind of cold and then the wind blows and then you're even colder, it's because it's constantly cooling off your skin, constantly cooling off. So that's how either the whirlpool works or the fluido and the opposite kind of way with the fluido, it's warming and constantly warming, constantly warming. So make sure that this patient has really good circulation because if they don't, this could end up being problematic for this patient. And the same thing with any sort of these heat modalities, make sure the patient has good circulation because if they don't, they won't be able to know that they're actually like burning or something like that. So examples of this would be fluidotherapy, as I pointed out here with this blurry picture, and then a whirlpool would be the other example of this. And the whirlpool can be either hot or cold. The fluido is only hot. Conversion. So with a conversion method of heat transfer, this would be that heat is transferred from one form to another. So the most common form of this would be ultrasound. So ultrasound is technically sound waves that are at a very high frequency. 
and they are being transmitted through a medium and through the um, ultrasound head into on, onto a body part and then going through the skin, so penetrating through. So in this case, heat is converted from sound to heat. Like energy is converted from sound to heat. So that's how this works. So remember with ultrasound that it requires a medium. So you can't just have the ultrasound thing just hanging out in the air. It's going to ruin the crystals inside of it. I have um, witnessed somebody do that. Not a good idea. Um, make sure that it's in contact with something. Most commonly, we're going to be using that ultrasound gel or any sort of um, lotion. That's another one that you can use. And then you can even put this in water and have it transfer through water. So that ends up working well. So this is conversion. And then another example of this would be diathermy. So diathermy is here on the right with this gentleman and another blurry picture laying down. And so diathermy you would use to heat up a deeper part and a larger surface area. Because remember when you're doing ultrasound on somebody, the um, amount of treatment area is only like two to three times the size of the sound head. So with diathermy, you can see that this is like probably like 10 times the size of it. The thing with diathermy is you have to make sure that the patient doesn't get overheated because it'll heat it up deep and it'll heat it up fast. But same thing with diathermy, converting uh, energy from one form that's not thermal into heat, which is thermal. The next one is evaporation and good news, this is pretty straightforward. The only real example of using evaporation is using a vapor coolant spray. So you'll spray it on, it'll evaporate really quickly and make the area really cold. So um, a lot of people spray the coolant on and then stretch the skin and stuff to kind of work with those patients. So essentially heat is absorbed by the skin very, very quickly and changed into water vapor, thus evaporating and cooling the skin. Because remember, as it evaporates, all those little droplets like absorb the heat from the skin and then evaporate off. And that's how you end up getting cooler. So skin heats up the coolant, causing it to evaporate. So this is evaporation, pretty straightforward. The only real example that the boards is gonna use or that you're gonna see is the vapor coolant spray. Radiation. Um, so this is the last um, example of different methods of heat transfer. So with radiation, you're going to um, use either some sort of UV light, a laser, or infrared light. Those are the most common ways that we're going to do this. So this is essentially taking light energy and turning it into heat. So you got to take into account that the energy source might be different and um, you have to see if are you using laser, using ultrasound, why are you using it? So this would be used either, it can be used to heat the area and also like UV light and stuff can be used with wound care and wound healing. That's how I've mainly used it in the clinic, but these are different examples of how we can use this. And there's different levels of like laser and radiant and like light therapies for different things. So just making sure that you're at the appropriate setting. But um, this is the, when you're using light therapy on, on somebody, you need to make sure that you're taking into account how far away is the light from the skin. Because remember, it is still light radiation. We have that risk of like any sort of skin injury due to the same way that you would get radiation problems from the sun. So making sure that we're not using this for long periods of time. It's usually like three rounds of 30 seconds. It's very, very short, at least for the UV laser that you would be using. Um, so make sure that you're also covering the light from the source. So then neither you nor the patient is looking into the light to make sure that you're not ruining your eyeballs because we need those to treat people. Um, and then noting that it's probably a very small area that we're treating when it comes to light therapy. So making sure that we're kind of doing a couple zaps on a couple of different parts. So those, this is what you need to take into consideration when we're talking about radiation. Okay, guys. So sample question. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient who was in a motor vehicle accident, accident two weeks ago. The patient complains of pain in her neck when turning her head to the left to look behind her. The physical therapist assistant applies moist heat to her cervical musculature. This is an example of what type of heat transfer. So I'll give you a quick second to think about that. Okay, guys, so the answer is conduction. So I know this is a very simple, straightforward question. It's like, what is this an example of? I would say for the most part, the boards are going to ask you questions like that. It's going to be, you have a whirlpool. What is this an example of? Well, that would be convection. Or you'll have ultrasound. What's this an example of? Well, that would be conversion. They'll usually try to do the three Cs. One of the three Cs, the conduction, convection, conversion, just to throw you off. But um, 
really the board is going to ask you this in a way that's do you know what type of heat transfer this is it's going to be really straightforward um something along those lines it's really not going to be too crazy so it is a hot pack so heat is being transferred from the hot pack into the colder body part or the her neck so that is how it's going to work so pretty straightforward convection as i said before that'd be a whirlpool or something conversion would be ultrasound evaporation would be the vapor coolant spray so the answer is number one conduction I hope this was helpful, guys, and I will see you next time. Take care.